What a chat. This right here is one, two, three, four, five, six of the lost nine and a half tribes were found in that meeting. We were missing Issachar, Zebulon, and Asher were the three that we were missing. Whoa, okay? dude. Yeah. That's cool. And, and, and Russell M. Nelson s- s- directed this. And he said, I pronounce my apostolic blessing upon you. We're beginning to gather the, the 10 tribes. This is so remarkable. My mission president was, I was freaking out. He loved <laughs> oh, legend. He was just Passion, be about it all action. This is also backed up by modern genetics. DNA supports what LDS patriarchs have discovered in nowhere Siberia. I know you think I'm crazy. No, this is cool. In the Discord, I have a photograph. The one calling in the church that you can't fake is a patriarch. I did Dude, not Dude, when I'm this. patriarch, bro. Like, <laughs> oh no. <I've> got- <laughs> There's something amazing about patriarchal blessings. Or escape the matrix, get your patriarchal blessing. They paid for every member in the entire mission who wanted to. This is as large as the continental United States, where Russell M. Nelson stood up and said, please divide into your tribes. This video is brought to you by scripturenotes.com for a free tribal description notes. Please make sure you check out the link in the description. How do I, how do we approach this? So first of all, scripturally, historically, okay? 10 tribes were scattered when the Assyrians conquered the Northern Kingdom. The only tribes left are Judah, Benjamin in the South, a little bit of Levi, because they're at the temple. And you have- A bit of Simeon. You have the Northern Strangers, uh, second chronicles chapter 17 i think the northern strange come down that's where you get the manassites with lehi and stuff like that but that's when it happens okay 828 822 uh bc i think around with hezekiah right mm. hezekiah's wall is this the right time period Sennacherib was the king of the assyrians i don't know about i don't know about oh hezekiah Israel. is the king of judah at the time okay 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 uh anyways they take the um Take the uh, 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 northern tribes, scatter them up to the north. They're gone. The last we hear about them, okay, is from Flavius Josephus, the historian in the first century AD. He says, the 10 tribes are beyond the Euphrates till now and are an immense multitude. After that, it's all conjecture. After that, it's all like, gee, we wonder where they went, okay? So this is the, um, the last what modern godless scholars and non-believing sycophants <laughs> would say <laughs> Whoa. was the sorry what i meant yeah, to say this yes. is the last time this is the last time what the experts say is the last historical reference that we can uh point to of the lost 10 tribes of israel being referenced and it was the jewish historian flavius josephus in the first century ad saying the 10 tribes are beyond the euphrates till now um, and are an immense multitude, he specifically mm-hmm. brings up. So as of first century AD after Christ, mm-hmm. this guy says they're north of the Euphrates now. So this is centuries after they're scattered. So where's centuries. the Euphrates? The Euphrates is a river. It, 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 it goes between like the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. It kind of goes like this. Um, and so they're scattered from here and they have, you have to go north across the Euphrates, up above that is the, the Caucasus Mountains, Georgia and those places, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, essentially, essentially what he's saying is they're kind of up in the Caucasus Mountains between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, okay? Now, most people try to track down through the historical records where they went. Just news to anybody who believes in the Bible, you believe in the gathering of the 10 tribes of Israel, that they're out there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That they've been lost and they got to come back. Some people yeah. are like, they're on the moon and they're going to come back. Or they're like, they're in the hollow earth and they're all in a big group. We're going to break through the icebergs or some like crazy, insane stuff like that. This is not as crazy. Whoa. Okay. Whoa, Jonah. Yeah. Brad, I'm sorry to offend Show you. Show a little respect. <laughs> for, <laughs> for the hollow earthers among us. hollow earthers. Hey, okay? hey. <laughs> hey, there's deep Mormon history that goes into the lost 10 tribes of Israel being in hollow earth. Did you know this? I think I've heard a whisper. With Brigham as, Young? No, as an Smith. author yourself, a Mormon author yourself, the first author to reference the Lost Ten t- Tribes of Israel being in the Hollow Earth was a science fiction author from Sweden, one of your compatriots uh, from oh, Sweden, Sweet. who in 1910 wrote a book 
about uh, he's he's the one that invented basically the Hollow Earth as a science fiction. How do you know this off the top of your head? Tribes of Israel. This was in our Hollow Earth episode. Oh, jeez! Oh my gosh! Yeah. So let me see. Where's the? uh, You can buy a print-on-demand version of it. You can buy a print-on-demand version of it on Amazon.com. And every single time I buy one of these, people end up seeing it. And being like, what? Well, what is that? I want to get that, and I end up having to give it away. I'll bring it up. I'll figure out what. I'll, I'll right. figure out what it is. But you all keep right. going. All right. All right. Okay. So the fear. The so the last we know is that they go across the Euphrates between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, and then poof. Everything else is kind of conjecture. Be, conjecture beyond that. Okay. Mm-hmm. The uh, Manassites that flee with Lehi and Ishmael to the New World, they technically aren't lost because they weren't scattered by Sennacherib and the Assyrians, right? They're part of tribes that are lost. They kind of, they're kind of orphans. Okay. And they go off to the new world. All right. But we're wondering where are these 10 tribes? First of all, the Apocrypha have an opinion about this. If you look in second Baruch, I know somebody's going to point this out as the associate professor of all things Apocryphal. I must point out that actually it's nine and a half tribes. That's what they called it back then. Not oh, okay. 10 tribes. They call it the nine okay. and a half tribes. Yeah. You can check this out in second Baruch. Okay. Um, but Here's, here's where I have personal witness and experience to the 10 tribes, okay? I served my mission in Siberia, Russia. Oh. Now, Siberia, Russia, this is a true, I'm, what I'm about to tell you guys is a total true story. Most of the stuff I say here is just total lies to look cool. But yeah. this is completely, oh <laughs> trust me this time, guys. It's a wolf. It's a wolf. This time it's a real wolf. So, I served my mission in Siberia back a million years ago, okay? And, uh, in order to create, so we have this thing in our church called patriarchal blessings. And in patriarchal blessings, among other things, you're told what tribe of Israel you come from. If you don't know this, this is going to sound really weird for people who aren't members of the church listening to this. They'll be like, wait, say what? Part of a part of a patriarchal blessing that you receive from a patriarch is it'll tell you which tribe you belong to. Okay. Some people are like, oh, that's just spiritual or figurative or symbolic or whatever. Joseph Smith said, we believe in the literal gathering of Israel. This is not a figurative gathering of Israel. It is a literal gathering of Israel and the restoration of the 10 tribes. Okay. So part of that patriarchal blessing, they will tell you what tribe you're from. I'm willing to volunteer here on the internet today. I am from the tribe of Ephraim. That's where I come from. Okay. Cool. Rock I'm on, proud. Rock I'm one on, of the bulls. Rock on. Yeah. One of the bulls. Okay. That's why you always root for Michael Jordan. If you're an Ephraimite, okay? Okay. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you gentlemen are, are willing to share if you've got a patriarchal blessing and if it's told you your tribe, but I imagine all three of you are, for, are from Ephraim, just like I am, okay? And most of the patriarchal blessings that have been given in the modern dispensation say that. I have a collection of about 40 patriarchal blessings given to my ancestors over the past 200 years, and nearly all of them are from Ephraim, okay? Brad, oh, are you going to say? I just have a grandpa from Benjamin, and then with my mom... The uh, the patriarch, it was kind of like a sorting hat with Harry Potter moment, and he like paused and was like trying <laughs> to think about hat? it. Yeah, and, and and my mom was like, "What the heck?" And they she asked him after. Um, he ended up saying Ephraim, but when he when she asked what was up with the pause, he was like, "I couldn't. I was having a very difficult time deciding between Manasseh and Joseph, and so I." Almost or Manasseh and Ephraim. and Ephraim. So I almost said Joseph instead, um, but huh. then felt directed Ephraim was right. Whoa! And so like, there's some funny stuff on my mom's side. But, Whoa! Yeah. What if you just don't remember? <laughs> I I don't remember. Carter, <laughs> then you're the probably I, I, I probably I Dan. Carter, probably come Dan. on! Only a no, Dan, not I'd Dan, forget. not Dan. It, it was <laughs> one of the only common Zebulon ones. Zebuloner would forget his tribe. Yeah, huh. seriously. Well, and Zebulon. Joseph was given his own tribe, though. Remember? That's what one of the small factoids that people oftentimes forget about that Joseph, uh, not Joseph, uh, that Joseph was given his own tribe after. Yeah, Hannah Starter talked about that in one of the podcasts we did. It was super interesting. It was like kind of an overlooked fact. Which that, Joseph? Of Egypt? Yeah. Or, or I don't remember. I'll let her talk. You keep going. Well, so yeah. <laughs> so so Simeon was kind of like dissolved, kind of, and then Ephraim and Manasseh kind of joined. So there's, so we think, oh, those are the 12 tribes. There's no Simeon, which actually we're going to find out is not true. Okay. And also before you continue, I found the book. It's a trip to the North Pole. 
Pole or the discovery of the 10 tribes as found in the Arctic Ocean. And look at this. This work has been selected by scholars as being culturally important as part of the knowledge base of civilization as we knew it. And it's a reproduction of, you know, uh, uh, the original work by Ote Julius Swanson Lindelof. Wow. One of your uh, besties there from My Sweden. My cousins, Swedish cousins. But right apparently the Hollow Earthers credit this as being the first reference or a pop culture reference or whatever type of reference to hollow earth in uh the the literature zeitgeist and it was by an lds what uh not pioneer but an lds um an lds author who i think was the son of like swedish pioneers who literally um what yeah it was i think it was written in like 1914 or 1908 you did an episode on this uh, it was part of an episode, mm -hmm. and he literally said that the lost 10 tribes of Israel were in the Arctic Ocean in a portal that went into the hollow earth, just like in King Kong, bro. How cool is that, what? bro? What? And, you and got that's the, a literal quote from him, <laughs> just like in King Kong, bro. So and he I, said this in the 1800s. <laughs> it was wild. So far be it from me to uh -huh. disagree with my Swedish cousin, okay. but a quick Google search here. Brings up one of the one of the pages of his book, and I'll just quickly throw it in the Discord so you can show the audience here. Uh -huh. <coughs> this is how Ute Julius, my cousin, who thinks he found the ten tribes in the Hollow Earth, got to the North Pole. Can you pull up the? Uh, okay, I'm looking at it in the uh, Discord. <laughs> right yeah, here. Okay. This is how he purports to have gotten to the North yeah. Pole. <laughs> That's a pterodactyl, boys and girls. Oh, via Carillum. Okay. That's a pterodactyl, boys and girls. Uh huh. So. Sorry, but I'm going to have to disagree with yeah. my cousin here, <laughs> Brother Ota. Well, guess what I just found out? There's only one more copy left. They don't do print-on-demand oh, anymore. We'll get it but now. But there is Act a leather-bound version. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. getting the freaking leather-bound version, All baby. about it. Oh, yeah. Not if I get it first. <laughs> Not if I get it first. We That's need to funny. download it in description notes. <laughs> That's funny. That's, That's right. funny. All right, so hit it, my man. Hit well, it. this sets the bar pretty low for my theories here. Um, <laughs> Um, we okay. didn't, I didn't get to my mission by pterodactyl. So what happened is in my mission in Siberia, it's an extraordinarily large geographic area, like ridiculously huge. Okay, Siberia is very, very big, and it's about one twelfth the population of the United States, of the continent of the United States, while it is the same landmass as the United States. It's huge, and there's nobody out there. Okay, so if you convert all these people to the gospel, uh, the restored gospel of Jesus Christ, how do you ever get a steak? Because steaks require a dense, a, a, a density, a collection of Melchizedek priesthood holders. And if you have a bunch out there, but they're scattered so far away, creating a steak is extraordinarily difficult. And so what the church said is these people are never going to get their patriarchal blessings. And so they called a guy and his pictures in the discord, um, uh, 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 what's his first name? Oh shoot, I can't remember. Elder Elder Schutze. Is okay, his name. cool. He's from East Germany. Yeah, and there's a picture of him in the Discord with his wife. She looks wonderful. This is yeah. a, obviously an older picture. Yeah. Um, but they called him to be a traveling patriarch, hmm. a patriarch without a stake. Okay. So he cool. was commissioned by the first presidents by by the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles to go off into Russia and give patriarchal blessings. Okay, cool. Rock this on. This is back in 2004, 2005, 2004 both anyways so he goes off and uh there's a line a mile long in every city he comes to because people are dying for patriarchal blessings yeah. they've heard about them they want to get patriarchal blessings and they're scattered all throughout siberia so he gets on a train and he goes to moscow and he gives as many blessings as he can and then he goes to voronish and he gives more and then he goes to rostov and he gives more and he tr and he makes his way across russia across Siberia, and then he kind of works his way back, and he just goes back and forth giving blessings to people, okay? Now, in every city, there's like 100 people who want a blessing, but he can only give like four a day. Yeah. And we're like, dude, how come you get only four a day? What's going on? Like, let's, uh, you know, let's expedite this process yeah. here. Let's get a drive-through going on. Let's get some like Las Vegas Temple of, uh, Chapel of Elvis stuff going on. Yeah, right, let's right, right, right. Let's work people through, get their blessings. And until I got to sit in on a blessing, uh, and do a translation for it. And I figured out why he only gives four a day because it is, it derains him. He just, he just collapses. You, you mm. give one of these things and he's just like, you can tell he's just 
tired because of the 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 spirit that acts through him. Right? Joseph Smith joked about this with I think it was Oliver Cowdery, Sydney, Oliver? Sydney. Sydney Rigdon, mm-hmm. or Sydney Rigdon was giving a blessing or something. It was after uh, the Vision section seventy six, yes. and Sydney collapsed in utter exhaustion, and and Joseph said, "Sydney's not as used to it as I am." Yes, yes, this is a true thing. Being being transfigured or or, or what a chat what a chat right yeah for real oh he can't handle the presence of the cherubim <laughs> 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 my first time yeah he'll get used to it but uh okay so he so he can only give a couple of these a day so i sat in on one of these and the blessing said you're of the tribe of gad and i was like well, i've never heard the tribe of gad that's kind of weird huh then the next one you're of the tribe of gad and i was like that's weird. I'm like, come on, mission president. I'm like, that's kind of weird, right? And then the next one, you're from Reuben. And I'm like, is anybody else hearing this? I've never heard. And we don't talk about it a lot, yeah. right? We yeah. don't talk about it. Like all you, all you chickens won't say what tribe you're from, right? Just right here in Old World Radio, okay? <laughs> and that's from. and that's. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I knew. I knew. I knew it was. Yeah, you. everybody gets Ephraim. I know that. Like mm-hmm. so many people do. Mm-hmm. Okay. The didn't gatherers. I tell you mine was Ephraim okay. when I was like, say, oh, oh man, I guess maybe I didn't. Maybe I got. I can't right. remember mine. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> I Whatever, like, man. I just, Jeez. I, seriously, I can't. Classic, I don't know if that makes me like a total Mormon Zebulon beta. Honor. But can't yeah, remember. okay. I'm like Wait. an omni prophet. Just like just, so, I'll pass yeah. the book to the next re- right, spiritual guy. <laughs> so because yeah. we don't talk about it, because we hardly ever talk about it, you never know, right? And so uh-huh. here I was hearing these tribes, and I was like, this is really weird. I talk to the mission president. He says, "Here, come, I'm going to tell you a story." So he pulls me aside and he, and he says, "Okay, so here's what's actually going on." Schutz has been traveling the country giving patriarchal blessings and he finds all these insane tribes every time. So much so that somebody heard a couple of them and went, hmm, and they called the area president and they said, do you know this is going on? And the area president called M. Russell Ballard and he said, what? Say, say that again? And decided that, that they were going to vet this. So they called a second traveling patriarch and they didn't tell him why. And they called Gary Browning, Professor Gary Browning from BYU Russian faculty. Okay. Who was one of the first mission presidents in Moscow. There's a picture of him also in the Discord. He's a very good man. I knew him personally. He actually babysat me when I was a little boy. He's a good dude. Okay, cool. And he uh, taught at BYU, just a lingu- linguistic genius. And they sent him over there to check the work of Elder Schutze. And they sent him part as patriarch and they sent him over there. Okay. They didn't tell him. Why? This cat right here. This cat right here. Okay, yeah, yeah, He yeah, goes yeah. across and guess what? He finds the same thing. He says- Wait, wait, so he what, regave the patriarchal blessing mm-hmm. to no, the individual person ones. or what? New ones to more people, different people. And he finds Naphtali, Reuben, you know, Levi, Issachar, all oh, these weird tribes. And so somebody's keeping track and they call M. Russell Bowden and they go, oh yeah, he's finding the same thing. And so the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles is like, what is going on in Russia? So, Russell M. Nelson, back in 2004, took the first ever trip of an apostle to Russia and uh, Siberia and sent him out to where I was serving my mission. And I met Russell M. Nelson in person and shook his hand. He came out there. They paid for every member in the entire mission who wanted to. This is as large as the continent of the United States. Paid their travel fees to gather in an auditorium in Krasnoyarsk, this is a true story, where they could all gather together, where Russell M. Where Russell M. Nelson stood up and said, please divide into your tribes. And people stood up and they moved to their tribes. We want Gad over here. We want Naphtali over here. We want Asher over here. And people stood up and they gathered in their tribes. The craziest thing I've ever seen. Okay, I was in this meeting. Did was there a contingent of all twelve in that room? I don't think we didn't find all twelve, but we found most of the tribes. I mean, and, and so now I know you think I'm crazy. No, this is cool. In the Discord, I have a photograph that okay. I took of my mission journal from that day. Yeah, and I wrote down the names of people in the tribes they were from. You're okay. welcome, people. You're welcome. I did this for you twenty years ago. Okay, and in this in this photograph here, this is just one page. Okay. I was taking notes in my journal and I write, okay, sister so-and-so is from Levi. President so-and-so, he was a branch president. He's from Gad. So-and-so is from 
Simeon, which I didn't even know Simeon has his own tribe, right? But he's from the tribe of Simeon. He was actually my mission companion. I had a mission oh, okay. companion from the tribe of Simeon. Cool. Then uh, a, a woman from Yekaterinburg. She's from Manasseh. And uh, she says, oh, my parents are from Naphtali and Dan. This right here is one, two, three, four, five, six of the lost nine and a half tribes were found in that meeting. We were missing Issachar, Zebulon, and Asher were the three that we were missing. Whoa, okay? dude. Yeah. That's cool. And, and, and Russell M. Nelson s- s- directed this. And he said, I pronounce my apostolic blessing upon you. We're beginning to gather the, the 10 tribes. This is so remarkable. My mission president was I was freaking out. He loved this. <laughs> oh, legend. He was just giddy. He was just like, oh, he loved it so much. Oh, yeah. It was this amazing meeting that we were all, that we were all. By about. the way, I got to tell you, bro, like. If there is a spirit, a deep spirituality in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that I do not mock, mm-hmm. it is that of patriarchs. Yeah, dude. dude. Because, like, I will tell you, for example, you guys know Richard Rich? Uh-huh. Y- you know, the, 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 the I don't want to go with my daddy, Lehman and Lemuel, Lost Scriptures videos, uh-huh. Made oh, yeah, the Swan yeah, 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 Princess, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, super killer, awesome animation career all the way from Disney in the 60s, doing like Robin Hood and the Fox and the Hound, directed all those, ended up launching his own career, has an amazing studio, guy's still kicking, he's like a modern Russell M. Nelson, wow. where like he looks like he could like run circles around you, he's like 90 something or whatever, you wow. know? but totally cool cat, I played basketball with his son growing up, right, totally know this guy, he's intense, he's artistic, he's creative, but he's always been super dedicated to the gospel, super spiritual and everything right so you know we're both artistic guys we're both you know entertainment guys every once in a while when i do a a a script that i kind of want to have like a positive message good spiritual overtone so on and so forth i'll run it by him and you know every once in a while i don't know he comes up with something cool like he'll send it to me or my friends or whatever and we'll look at it you know it's just it's one of those fun friendships you keep up with on uh, for a while right well dude i actually invited him to come on the show once Really? Actually, yeah, yeah. I actually invited him to come on the show, and he is. Do not give me the limelight. Like this guy mm. is the epitome of literally. He would do this Christmas concert with like a fifty piece orchestra that he wrote himself with two hundred a, a mini Mormon Tabernacle choir, and he would write all of the music for it as just a gift to the public for Christmas because mm. Jesus is the Christ, mm. and he mm. wanted people to feel the spirit. Right? What a dude! So if you like, you know, got up to say the closing prayer, and we're like, yeah, shout out to Richard Rich. He would just shrink in his seat and then reprimand you after, you know, like just like salt of the earth guy, Good right? Dude. Good dude. Well, anyway, so I called him up one day. I said, you know, I'd really love to get you on and just talk about like what it's like to be a patriarch. What it's like to this. He's like, oh, you know, maybe let me give you some other guy's numbers. Let me give you this or whatever. And then I was like, bro, I, I finally after like inviting him on a couple of times and him, him and Han and saying, I'll think about it. I was like, dog, at this point, you're not thinking about it. You're just saying, no, like what gives, dude? Like talk to me mono to mono, right? Yeah. And it was so interesting. You know what he said? Hmm. He said, Cardin, I never like, he's like, I know that when I get in these situations where, because he knows, like, like we, we uh, um, sometimes we'll like debunk anti Mormons or also get like excited or like this and that. No, he us? Li- no. Well, he literally says Monday, like, he's like, I can't remember what he said. So I don't want to put too many words in his mouth, but he basically said, like, it's my full time job now preparing spiritually to give blessings. And I want to do absolutely nothing oh. that would impede. Uh, that would distract me from that. And he says, even though like, I love your show and like, I would love to, Mm. um, you know, go on and talk about and stuff like that. He's like, that's what I would be thinking about. And he's like, I want to be thinking about just channeling my faculties with the energy that I have to do this thing. And he's like stripped down his life. So he's a straight up, Patriarch, dude, like that's what this cat is, dude. Dude, they're and intense. It's, they're yeah, intense. Awesome. and it's that's rad. So cool. It's like so rad. It's like you know, if there was somebody out, if there's whatever this voodoo connection we're saying patriarchs yeah. got, you know, whatever this like fifth dimension is that they're tapping into, if any level of sacrifice gets you there, like dude, if the prophet said you need a forty day water fast, this guy would be out there in a robe yeah. with a bottle of Arrowhead, just sitting there meditating, you know, like. Totally do. I'm telling you, and and so it's like it's the closest thing to like modern 
not shamanism because that's just that's that's too broad of a word but just like modern like Okay, that is a, there is a man over there who is sanctified yeah. to be the spiritual connection between heaven and mother freaking earth. Yeah, dude. You yeah. Know? Like, so my, pardon. my college roommate's father was, was called to be a patriarch. Yeah. They were the most sport. They loved sports, big screen TVs, BYU fans, all these things. He gets called to be a patriarch. And I remember his, his boy was like, yeah. So all these like jet ski trips, all these movies, all these sport sporting events we watch in the bit in the theater, it's all gone. He ripped it all out. He gave it all away. They didn't have a television. They didn't have a radio. They got nothing. Stripped it all down. <laughs> See, it's I'm like, telling you, man. Dude. Like, <laughs> my, patriarchs are intense, yeah. My dad was his patriarch. Oh, was he? Really? Yeah, he got called. What when, happened to you? I know. It's crazy. <laughs> <hate> scripture <laughs> notes, bro. You know, oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> they say the acorn I can't fall. joke with you so hard either. One of the comments <laughs> on the live stream last night was, I really do not appreciate how you mock Oak Norton so much during these podcasts. Oh, like, you, <laughs> when the cameras are off, Oak goes so hard on us. He's a super mean guy. <laughs> yeah, Oak's the little guy on the basketball that. team with a really high jump. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, yeah, he goes hard in the paint. Spud dude. five three, eight foot jump. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, so keep going. <laughs> so anyway, uh, when I was a kid, my my dad was uh, branch president, uh, baptized me. He made special arrangements for a Christmas Day baptism because he was branch president. So, uh, you know, we were down at the church. That took place. Then he's... This is Pennsylvania, right? Yeah, Pennsylvania. Okay. And uh, we're in State College. Some of the people out there are going to know this because my dad... I'm named after my dad. I'm actually Oak the Third. Oh, so cool. We've Rock got on. a little... Uh, name comes out of our family tree, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did you name a child Acorn? Uh, actually, uh, we named our kids Aspen, Willow, oh. Holly, Savannah, and Oak. All right. Savannah's, okay. Savannah's not a tree. Okay. Savannah is a treeless plane, and I'll have you know, after about 15, 20 years of her, I Googled Savannah Oak just to see what would come up. There is a conference every year in Wisconsin on Savannah Oaks, sparsely populated savannas, sparsely populated by oak trees. I, an actual conference. I was like- A conference? A Who conference. goes to a Savannah nice. Oaks conference? That's some it dedicated the guy yeah, it, on the podcast <laughs> with the fifth <laughs> t- Lost Ten <laughs> Tribes episode. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of nerds? Anyway, so about the hollow earth. <laughs> so anyway, my dad is called as patriarch when I was probably about 12 years old. Oh, wow. And the, the patriarch that was leaving, his name was uh, Francis Taylor. He was moving to Florida. And, you know, the, the transition, He's he calls my dad up, you know, they have some meeting, and he's like, he looks at my dad, and he says, Oak, the one calling in the church that you can't fake is a patriarch. Whoa. <laughs> and my dad was Dang. like, yep. <laughs> like, you... You can fake anything else because most of it's administrative. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, okay, mm-hmm. so I'm administering like this position or I'm teaching a class or whatever. You, you read the lesson the morning of, whatever. You can fake stuff, but like being a patriarch, you can't fake that. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. That's Deep, cool. Bro. No, okay, these guys keep are going, super. Keep going. Keep they're going, super. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, these two patriarchs correspond. They, 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 um, what's it called? They prove each other. They, they, Corroborate. Corroborate. Thank you. They corroborate each other. Russell M. Nelson himself personally flies to Podunk, Siberia, gathers these people in an auditorium, divides them into their tribes. Craziest thing ever. Pronounces his apostolic blessing upon them and says, we're gathering the 10 tribes. And what does Russell M. Nelson always talk about? Gathering the 10 tribes is the greatest work that we have. And what did he promise? A temple in Russia, right? He, he, He knows this. Okay, guys? Now you know it. Now... This is also backed up by modern genetics. So there's a picture in the Discord. Really? People okay. always try to trace the ten tribes with a blah bitty blue bitty blah. But there's a picture in the Discord. It's like uh it's like cream colored and like dark red. Gotcha. Oh, veins going through got it. it. Right here. Yeah. Okay. This is tracing DNA markers. Okay. Whoa. Looking at migrations from the Near East. And they show, look at the convergence. The Caucasus Mountains. See how they all go right there? The Euphrates. Is is this little kind of yeah. right with it? So they went from the the light purple is that Lebanon or Levant yeah, Levant yeah, yeah. up to the Caucasus, the yellow dot, 
and the north of there and scattered. And what do we read in the DNC? They're in the north countries. We have to north gather them of the, from the north. Euphrates, yeah. yeah. North of the Euphrates. They go beyond there. They either go west across the black, top of the Black Sea to Europe, which is where my ancestors must have come from, as I'm an yeah, Ephraimite. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Or yeah. they went east across the Caspian Sea, north of the Caspian Sea, to where? See the green dot in the corner? Siberia. Wow. So this is tracing Dude. DNA of, of people migrations through the Caucasus Mountains from the Near East. So DNA supports what LDS patriarchs have discovered in nowhere Siberia. That the 10 tribes are there and well, some other places too. We found six of them at least. And they're waiting for us to gather them. So please tell me that this genetic information came out after the patriarchs had already done the patriarchal blessings and that the science verified the patriarchs instead of the patriarchs verifying the science. Please tell me it was in that order. Oh, that would be way too cool. Well, remember, the patriarchs did this in 2004. They weren't doing, wow. they weren't doing genetic tracing through the Caucasus Mountains. There was barely computers. Yeah. So the patriarchs and found And running this. water. Yeah. <laughs> And, and AC electricity. Hair, hairless mastodons. No, <laughs> yeah. no, no one had Crocs. They weren't walking <laughs> no around. No one had Crocs. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, so, so keep going, Jonah. Keep well, going. Well, so I'm, that's, I mean, that's that's basically it. So I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying that now, if you haven't received your patriarchal blessing, okay, you should. And if you're disappointed, there's some people listening to this who are disappointed in their patriarchal blessing because you think it's too common. I've heard anti-Mormons say this. It's just like, it's just like, it's a boilerplate. There's nothing special about it. Yeah, that's what a lot of the scriptures sound like, too. These are the boneheads that say, oh, the Book of Mormon is just a Captain Kidd novel. Because yes, they can't tell the is. freaking difference between a Book of Mormon and a Captain Kidd novel. Like, seriously, and Charles Dickens yeah. generally have read neither. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Charles Dickens, Ernst Hemingway could have written their patriarchal blessing and they'd say, dude, it's just like boilerplate. Yeah. You so know, it's nothing it's, interesting. It's just like, it's yeah. serious. I will say, there, okay. there's something amazing about patriarchal blessings. Yes. I, I try to review mine relatively often, and uh, Riley does too. And, dude, they are absolutely incredible. It's, it's fascinating to see the number of times oddly specific things my patriarch said in my patriarchal yeah. blessing have come to pass in my life. Like you would have perfectly groomed eyebrows? <laughs> it was weird that he said that. I'm no, like, what? <laughs> what made you come up with this? No, but yes, he did. <laughs> no, but there's there's like fascinating things that like I would understand later. One one in particular that is just fascinating to me. He, he mentioned me having uh, the gift of tongues on my mission. Cool. And in the same phrasing of it, mentioning that I would be able to speak to and, and pe speak to and understand people according to their language and their customs. And then I got called to New York, English speaking and thought, how's that going to happen? You know, <laughs> and so but as I was out there, I had several experiences that made that super clear to me, not just with language itself, but also customs. There were mm. like people from India that I would teach and huh. then end up fitting in with their customs weirdly well from stuff that I maybe kind of remembered from being a tiny kid when I lived in like the East Indian ghetto part of Canada, oh, you know, yeah. and, and there's like really fascinating stuff or, or stuff that my dad taught me, you know, about random cultures and things like that huh. that showed up in, in really interesting ways. Wow. And would you help like Indian chicks like pluck their eyebrows, bro? Or like, what'd you do? No, 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 no. It was, it was <laughs> it stuff about like, too. Uh, like eating with your hands. <laughs> oh, okay. It, it, cool, like there, okay. it was really funny because like one, there was this specific instance with the Copacetti family as I'm like uh, eating rice with my hands and they're like, hey, you can like, you can do this. Like, huh. And I was like, oh, dude, people normally struggle. And they're like motion to my companion. I'm like, oh, <laughs> and like he's huh. having trouble with it. And like it was really fascinating because I went home that night and I'm like, oh, this is 100 percent something out of my patriarchal blessing that like, I don't know, to me came across as like little signals as I'm going kind of the right direction. You know, you but, know th those things at, at, at first, like mine, mine felt totally boilerplate and I was so disappointed for years. I hated it. I hated my patriarchal blessing. And then on my mission, I was like, you know what? I'm never going to get another one. Never going to get another one. So mm -hmm. I better I better like this one. And so I took it out and I really studied it. And I really prayed and I really studied it. And all these things started coming through the lines. And I was like, oh my gosh, I did Dude, not appreciate this. Dude, when I'm this. patriarch, bro, 
Like, oh no! Got- <laughs> <laughs> Sentences oh, that oh, go have never. On. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying I was just thinking, like, when I'm patriarch, you know, and judging by what Brad Whippeck said, you know, I'm gonna be super just waiting for the spirit to, like, you know, tell some 14 year old kid you're gonna be really good at chopsticks, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if, if Brad can be good, if Brad can be good at freaking like Yay, and your eyebrows. Indian finger food eating, I'm like, one of these kids so- is getting the gift of chopsticks, dude. It was just so <laughs> fascinating, dude. Like seeing that come through in what my patriarch had said to me when I was like 14. Yeah. Uh-huh. That like I would be able to understand them according to their language and their customs. Like, what the heck does that no, mean? It sounds and silly. Th- yeah. And until then down the line, I'm like, this is exactly what it was aiming towards. Yes. And and it was just really fascinating because there's way more than just that. Yeah. That, <laughs> that came through. But like, it, it's a really incredible thing. And I, I think that they are tapping into something. L- legitimately, and, patriarchal blessings, more than anything else, break the matrix. They yes, break the I'd matrix. Say, that's what I was trying to say earlier where I'm like, man, <clears throat> I love what Oak said about how, dude, Patriarch is the only calling you can't. It's the fake. only calling you can't fake. Yeah. That is our fifth dimension. Mm. Like like in the Hanson Five model of epistemology. Mm. Mm. You know, Protestants already say there are no relics, there are no miracles, there are no nothing. And yet here's the Mormons coming out saying, like, well, not only are there miracles, and there's a lot of us reserved Mormons that are like, yes, some of this can be naturalistically explained, and yes, you know, they're few and far between, but we're going to reserve the right to believe in them, you know, mm-hmm. and we're constantly the hedging. squishes. Yeah, yeah. The, the squishes. We're <laughs> constantly hedging, you know, but we believe in blessings that the elders can go in and reverse just like the natural, uh, just, 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 just divert that river, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Time. And then we also yeah. say there is a man and not just one every stake is entitled to it and he will be quickened by the spirit of God to receive direct revelation on your behalf from God to such a degree that it's physically taxing you yes, know what I'm dude, saying? It is, dude. it's just like whoa dude it awesome. breaks the matrix breaks it's the matrix it's freaking based dude man. it's crazy it, it is crazy now if you have got your patriarchal blessing and this is kind of a cool hack by the way if you log into lds.org and you go to my account, my blessing, I think. Yeah, you, you can, can find to, it you on can, LDS.org. And you can request a blessing. That's you can cool. also request the blessings of your direct ancestors. Mm-hmm. Did you know this? Ooh. So I, that's what I did. I collected all the blessings of, of people previous to me who have had patriarchal blessings, and I have a big folder of them, of my ancestors, so I can see, because a lot of their promises trickle down to me anyways. It's really, really cool to see, because when do you get to like, read other people's patriarchal blessings? Mm-hmm. Not very frequently. Yeah. So it's really cool to see what patriarchs have said before. Sometimes they're similar with what appears to be minor variations. Sometimes they're totally different, right? Wow. But uh, so you can go check that out for your ancestors. Um, and then if you haven't got your patriarchal blessing, you absolutely need to go get your patriarchal blessing because it breaks the flipping matrix. And don't just casually walk in. If you're not ready to experience a warp in the space time continuum, then you're going to lose. You're going to miss out. Dude, so. that's a shirt we got to make. Es- break the space time continuum or escape the matrix. Get your patriarchal blessing <laughs> or something. You know? Oh, you know what? Yeah. You'll dig this. I had an ancestor who was not a patriarch who I think it was actually faked it. No, it was, it was like Hiram Smith was the patriarch at the time. Or was it mm-hmm. John Smith or somebody? But comes to his house and he's like, hey, I'm going to give a patriarchal blessing to your kids. And he's like, I'm their patriarch. And he just like, Gives the patriarch, he's not a patriarch. He's just their father. He's like, patriarch means father. I'm their father. And he gave their patriarchal blessings to his children. And that's recorded in the church records. <laughs> just a father. Isn't that that's based? Epic. Isn't that cool? Like, yeah. <laughs> just like, I'm their father. I got this. <laughs> gave the blessing? Super cool. Super yeah, cool. That's hardcore. In the we do not endorse that. It. Here at Ward Radio. We do and not Hiram endorse. was just like, all right, dog. Yeah. We're like, okay, <laughs> take it away. And he just did he's it. like, by all means. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and he's like, I declare you're from the tribe of me. Of <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you're, you're, you're from the tribe of base. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> all right, let us know what you guys think, please, in the oh, comments wait, wait, below. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, what? I just want to... Back to the topic that we originally started on with uh, the 10 tribes. With hijacking so, the role of a patriarch for yourself? Yeah. Was that yeah. <laughs> where we ended up? <laughs> so, real quick on this. Um, 
So your your thought process is uh, scattering of the ten tribes happens right around the Assyrian conflict with the Northern Kingdom. Yeah, they get brought up into the Caucasus Mountains and just spread out from there. Yeah, and that's the the gist of your theory. That's that's as far as the historical record. I mean, most people agree on that theory. They're they're brought up across the Euphrates, is north around the Caucasus. So can we put the ends. map there really quick? This is really important. Yeah. Actually. Huh. So I want you to like zoom in on the map just a little bit more. Uh, okay, zoom in on the map just a little bit more towards what the center? Uh, go to the Caucasus Mountains, right? Okay. So see those lines going out to the left and out to the right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want you to just zoom, like scroll up as if you were going north. Okay. And oh, and, that's the top of the map. Yeah. And what's up there? The, oh, the North Pole. Yeah, <laughs> You're such a geek. baby. You're such it's a nerd. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so Did you hear anything I said, <laughs> Brad? <laughs> Jonah Barnes's model is perfectly compatible, perfectly compatible. with <laughs> the Lost Ten Tribes uh, in the Hollow. Uh, I quit. I quit. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> hey, and by the way, speaking of which, just to have you know, just to have you know. It is officially purchased, the leather-bound copy. Oh, did you buy the it? The leather-bound copy. Oak, did you buy it, Oak? <laughs> no, I, I thought that. I... Ah, oh, it's too slow. Oh, oh. I got it. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. And as always, for this and more, please check us out at wardradio.com. Passion. Be about it all action. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. We assume if you made it this far that you liked our content, so please make sure you like this video and you share it with your friends. Now, in order to keep this content flowing freely, we need your help. If you're a person of means, please check us out on Venmo, the Cash App, or Zelle and consider a direct contribution to the channel. Or you could always go to wardradio.com and sign up for our newsletter there and receive all of our latest Ward Radio news articles directly to your inbox. And while you're there, maybe consider purchasing some merch. We have some really cool hats, some really cool shirts so you can strut your stuff and support the channel that way. Or if you're a kind of person that wants to just help out with some of the equipment in the studio, we have an Amazon wish list linked in the description as well. And don't forget scripturenotes.com. You have to read your scriptures daily. And scripturenotes.com is frankly the coolest way to study your scriptures and they're a very generous sponsor of this channel. So please consider a free trial with scripturenotes.com. The link to scripture notes will also be in the description of this video. Either way, whether you're pressing this little button right here to subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends or whether you're actually hitting this button right here just to watch another video, we look forward to seeing you in the next program.